Hello folks and welcome to the channel or welcome back and in this episode we're going to continue to work in the tower room and as you can see we moved on quite a bit I'm almost finished with putting up the plasterboard or the drywall the wall in the back there is completely finished and replastered. That is not the drywall. The walls on the left and the right, these are actually drywall. And then that wall over there is actually the natural wall, which we still have to do a little bit of work on, but we still have to finish up certain areas. One area is across or above the windows. And also, um, I promised you that I would show you on how you can actually enforce outer corners with steel enforcement on drywalls and so this is what we're going to do in this video so first of all let me show you what i had to do already on top of the windows so let us have a look at the top of the windows what i had to do in terms of plastering and i'm going to try to explain you what i've done so far so this is the part that I had to fill in actually and you can see this is kind of shaped in a curve and then we have these rails of plaster on the sides here. Uh, this was all manual plaster work. I've applied the first coat and all that had to be recreated because there is nothing left. I'm going to show you uh, the other side how it looks like before I start doing it. And this is the part that hasn't been done before especially all the way on top. There we need to put some plasterboard up and then we do exactly the same thing as we did on the left hand side window. So all what I've done is I put some drywall up on the top. Of course I put some enforcement behind that and you've seen those steel rails before. But putting the shape back into uh, a, a acceptable uh, form wasn't all that difficult. Um, if you're going to do this work, don't try to plaster it in one go to perfection because that is not going to work. So I have applied the first coat more or less towards the shape. Now I'm going to sand it once it's dry and then I'm going to apply a second coat and if necessary a third coat until the moment in time that I'm happy with the looks of this um, area here. So this is the final result of the arc that we have replastered. And you can actually see that the arc is not as curved as the other window. And that is because the brickwork above it has sagged a bit over time. Now, it is still very solid because I have it enforced on the top. And I was considering, you know, doing away with the arc and rebuilding it from scratch. But that wasn't necessary because it was still so strong. In fact, it's been like this since I came here 25 years ago. And this is the left-hand window and you can see the arc is far more steep um, but in this video we're going to first of all uh, fill up these gaps here and you can see the gaps and we're going to level that up and then we're going to put the enforcement on the corners with some steel rails and we'll also then fill up the joints here which are the v-groove joints now there were some comments from people saying that um, whenever you connect panels together in the height so the ceiling is higher than the panel length and you don't have the proper drywall which is kind of a thinner side all around and it only has it on the sides then it's going to crack always well i have to say it doesn't because if you place enforcement the piece of wood in the back then you won't have that problem there are different types of enforcement that you can put on the outer corners of drywall and this is just one type. As you can see, it has these white holes. Um, it's good. It's not my preferred one. That's what I prefer. It's more of a maze. Uh, it's about the same strength, but I think the touch surface is um, a lot bigger here. But that wasn't available, most likely because of the Corona days. Uh, so um, I'm going to use this. I mean, I've used it before and it just works as good. It's just a personal preference. The method to use is very simple. So if you have an outer corner like this one, then you need to enforce it because people will bump into it. And for that, we're using these metal rails. And it's very simple. You just place it in that corner and then you fill up this edge with joint filler. So in practice, what I normally do, I fill up this whole area here. And if you have the two boards with the thinner side facing each other in the corner, then you fill this up with uh, joint filler and then you push this metal bar into it right? 
And once it's in it, it will actually stay in it because it will, the joint filler will come through the holes. And then uh, I'm filling up the sides here with more joint filler. And that way you're going to get a very straight angled corner. So, um, and here we have the outer corner of the window frame and I will have to install this uh, enforcement right here. But as you can see, um, there is a gap here. It's pretty deep. Now there's a couple of things you can do with us. Uh, you can actually fill this up with joint filler. But I wouldn't do that because it's going to be a lot of joint filler. Now the reason that I have this gap between the wall and the other side of the wall is because I have insulated it and then we glued and we put a frame up to put these plasterboards up. So now first of all I need to fill this up. Now filling that up isn't all that hard. Um, I like to recycle things if I can and if you work with drywall you're gonna cut off a lot of parts and leftovers. So what you can do is put that in there and use some of that leftover uh, and that actually will save you a lot of plaster. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to glue this in and then we should be good to go. I need to clean up my glue gun a bit because it's been sitting here overnight. So I'm going to glue in that strip of plasterboard and for that one I'm using my polyterrain glue and believe me this works real well. All right. I'm going to let it sit there for a few minutes so it actually becomes uh, sticky and then we can uh, put it in. And this kind of a fixation glue works very well. Um, a lot of people say don't do this, it's going to become loose over time. Well I can assure you that it doesn't. I've done this so many times and over the last seven, eight years and these panels are still on the wall. They don't come off, uh, believe me. Um, in fact, if you look at masonry nowadays, they glue um, cellar concrete blocks with the same kind of foam or um, glue. So this is good stuff. Uh, so let's see if we can put that part in now. It should be dry by now. I might have to cut off this little piece here just to make sure it fits properly. So I think the glue is about ready now, uh, almost. Uh, so yeah, let's put it up and see. So I'm going to put it in and press it all the way in there. And that's it. Now that's in. And now I can fill this up with joint filler to make it a little bit even and then finally we'll install the enforcement corner on it. And for the joint filler I'm going to use this powder based joint filler. I think this works a lot better and dries a lot faster and it's harder than the paste that you can get pre-made. I talked about this before. If you're going to get joint filler and don't mind this brand <clears throat> you'll see that uh, there's always a number behind it and 45 refers to the drying time. So I have like 45 minutes to apply it and after that you can't use it anymore. So uh, use it clean tub always because otherwise the drying goes a lot faster and you don't get a smooth surface. Pour some in it, not too much because you know you have to be able to finish it up in 45 minutes and it's better um, to put a little bit less in than too much and then just pour some water into it and mix it until you have something like the consistency of Nutella. I guess you know what Nutella is and then just go and mix it. And this is more or less the consistency you want to get. So it doesn't fall off unless you of course you shake it. All right, so now we can apply it. I'm going to do it pretty rough in the beginning, as you can see. Now 
the idea is that you create kind of a smooth surface, level with the wall. And then use your blade or your knife to pull this more or less straight. Right. And I can tell I still need a lot more there. And don't worry to put too much up. Huh? We scrape it off. So I think this starts to look all right. Okay, so I'm going to clean up the edge now and that's all there is to it. So now it's time to actually uh, mount this enforcement rail on the side of this drywall. I already have done the top part, it was a bit hard to tape it, so uh, I'm going to do it on the lower level. So you will see some close-ups here on how we're going to do this. So let me move the camera so we can start with this. All right, so um, just trying to fit it now and see if it fits and it does. So the first thing I'm going to do right now is to fill up this side here with joint filler. And actually I'm going to put quite a bit on it, as you can see. I'm going to do it on both sides of the wall. And don't worry about it, just put enough on it so you can push, press, so that you can press that metal bar in it properly. And then we do the sides as well, because we need to push it in on both sides. And there might be other ways of doing it, but this is the way I do it and it has always worked for me. It's always a little bit tricky to make just enough of this stuff, not too much, because otherwise you will have wasted it because you have a limited drying time, or open time as they call it. So with everything filled up, I'm now going to press in this bar. And you will see it coming out, and that's what you want to have. And once that is in the way you want to have it, and you can use a level if you want, then it's time to level it all up, like so. And then we're going to do the inner side exactly the same way. And that is how it's done. And as you can see, it went very quickly. I've done already the complete side. I'm going to let it dry. It may not be perfect in all the places, but that's all right because we still have to give it a finishing coat at the end. So this is the raw corner. Uh, it's not been sanded. And you can see already where the metal bar is. So if I'm now going to sand it, you'll see how nice that becomes. And I will have to do all those all around the door frames and the window frames. So let's start.
and this is how it will be when we're all done with sanding it. So that's a very sharp, clean and strong corner. Now one of the other problems I had was one of those moldings here was actually missing on the other side. So I had to create a new molding and I'm going to show you on how I made that molding. And the way to do that is by simply making a template. You put it along the side, you use your pencil, mark it, then cut it out with some scissors. This is just a piece of hard plastic. And then you can recreate that molding, very simple. Creating a plaster mold is very easy. Uh, but of course, uh, this is only valid for very short pieces. If you need multiple feet or multiple meters, then you have to do something else. You will have to have a long table and you have to enforce the plaster that you're going to use. But I only need like half a foot of mold, so I'm just going to create it in a very simple way. I already have pre-cut my uh, template and you've seen that on the ceiling. Well, it's just a strong piece of plastic and you use some scissors to cut it out. That's all there is to it. Now, of course, uh, if you're going to put plaster on a piece of wood, it's going to stick to it, so it may be hard to get it off. So what I have here is a piece of wood where I'm going to uh, put my mold up and another piece of wood which is higher, so I can actually scrape along the top one here so I have a straight line. Uh, but I will protect the bottom piece of wood from the plaster with some aluminum foil because otherwise uh, it's going to stick to it when it dries up and that is not the intention of course. Huh? So let me do that. All right. And I'll make it very smooth. So and now all that I have to do is put some plaster up here and then we can start and I can actually uh, go along the edges here and create that mold. Very roughly the first time. All right. And then I keep wobbling like this. until I get a little bit of a form. And the reason that I'm using this bigger block on the side is just because I want to keep a straight line. So I made my plastic part a little bit wet now. You can see how this is coming along quite nicely. And once it's done, I'm just going to let it dry. And for the rest, I have to sand down all the joint filler areas where the boards are joining each other. I'm going to use a grid uh, 100 to begin with. Once I'm done with sanding the joint filler, I'm going to cover the whole area as you see here with the joint finisher. And I like to do it across the board, even the cardboard where it's normally not necessary, but I like to do it like that because it gives you a nice finish. And for that one, you're going to need a knife. And I think you've seen me doing this before. So now I'm going to continue doing the top part. I will have to install my scaffolding and then I will do all this and we do the rest of the walls. We're going to sand down further the, f the areas that are now finished and then I'm going to make another video for you all so where you can see the final result when everything is painted. So folks this is the end of this video and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I know it was not very exciting it's a bit of a wrap up on installing the plasterboards in the tower room uh, but for my next video I have something really special coming. I was able to pick up something really, really nice. And you'll see that hopefully before the end of the year. Bye-bye.